Um, they're dealing with old applications and newer applications. Uh, they're dealing with some applications from, uh, from the 60s and some applications that were built uh, over the past couple of years. They are working on premise and they're working in the cloud. They're working with Linux, they're working with Windows. But perhaps most importantly, they're providing vital services to uh, 100 million customers, uh, literally on issues that impact life and death. And so it's, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome to the stage uh, Aaron Aids, AVP of Social Engineering at MetLife. Wow, DockerCon, MetLife, an insurance company, a DockerCon. Thanks for having me, Ben. You know, um, yesterday I couldn't help noticing you, that you said Docker just turned four, right? And I, I was thinking that, wow, next year it's a really big year for you guys. And likewise, MetLife has got a big milestone next year too. Like you guys are turning five. We're turning 150 years old next year, in April of next year. MetLife's an old company. We're a big company, too. Right? We've got 100 million customers, and we operate in nearly 50 countries. We sell all kinds of things, life insurance, home insurance, auto insurance, dental, disability. And if you think about it, all these products are nothing more than a promise, right? A promise that says if you pay a small premium, that MetLife will be there to make you financially whole in the event of some catastrophe. Right? That could be a car accident, a you know, root canal, or God forbid, an untimely death in the family. And if you think about what a promise is, it's nothing but a little bit of information. So we've been in the information management business for 150 years. And over that period of time, we've had to make strategic bets on technology to stay ahead of our competition. And what I want to talk about today is how we're making a similar bet on Docker to make us more agile and nimble and to stay ahead of our competitors. So MetLife was founded in 1868. That's three years after the end of the Civil War. And high technology of that day was the universal stock ticker. Right? At that first year of operation, we sold almost 1,500 policies with a face value of about $4 million. By the 1920s, we're paying death claims by telegraph. Right? And we're paying over 1,000 claims a day. In an eight-hour workday, that's one out of every 28 seconds. And then by the 1950s, our business is so computationally complex that we're the first company in the entire industry to invest in large-scale computing. And we buy one of these things. It's a Univac machine. And this continues into the 1980s, where we write our first consolidated claims application for the entire business, and we shove it into an IBM mainframe. 1982 ends up being a pivotal year for MetLife, because there is code that is running in production today that was written in 1982. Right? 35 years old. And I've been at DockerCon for a couple of days. and, and um, I know what the audience looks like, so show of hands, like who wasn't even born, let alone coding, 35 years ago? And then in 2000, MetLife becomes a public company. Right? And this fuels another wave of growth. Right? We acquire new businesses. We expand into emerging and developing markets. We go into adjacent businesses. And what we end up with by the first part of this decade is over four hundred systems of record spread out, spread around the world. These things are running on anything, IBM mainframes, AS400, Windows, Linux. And anyone who's had to deal with a legacy system knows it's hard, right? Refactoring code or even integrating with a single legacy system is a project. It takes time, it takes money, it takes resources, let alone dealing with dozens of these things all over the world. But you know what? Your customers don't care. They want to come to a website, and they want to see everything about your business relationship on a single screen. And they want to call into a call center and talk to someone who can likewise see a holistic view of everything that you do with them. Your sales agents, you know, they, they want to 
treat your customers holistically. They want to upsell. They want to cross-sell. And this is really hard when you have to deal with all this legacy, let alone deliver a user experience on something like an iPad or an iPhone or a screen of any size. So about three years ago, MetLife hired a new uh, chief architect for the company to kind of solve some of these problems. And I, I'm not sure, but he might have spent some time here in Austin at these wonderful establishments down on 6th Street or like Rainy Street where the, the party was last night. Because as you'll see, like the strategy, strategy has this kind of weird Texas feel to it, right? Um, so it's a three-part strategy. In phase one, is you've got to wrap your systems of record in a layer of microservices. Just like a layer of bacon will make almost anything taste better, microservices will likewise make all of your legacy apps more palatable. Right? So it's something about breaking that business logic into little tiny pieces that makes you more nimble, makes you do things like differentially scale. It just makes your systems of record much more easy to deal with. Step two, you need to tap into the data stores on those systems of record. And what you're looking to do is modernize the way you access the data. You can use a number of technologies to do this, you know, from APIs for your data to big data like Hadoop to NoSQL. It doesn't matter, but what's important is that you're providing a layer of abstraction, right? Your developers shouldn't care what it looks like on the back end, right? They don't need, they don't need to know whether it's a DB2 database running on a mainframe or MySQL running on Linux. As long as they can get the data flowing efficiently and securely, you're going to be well ahead. And once you've dealt with the data, and your microservices have really come to parity with those old monolithic applications, you turn them off, right? You send them to the scrap heap. So that's it, right? A strategy for dealing with your legacy system, really, in three words, wrap, tap, and scrap. And what you end up is with is something that looks like this, right? A modern UI that shows an a holistic view of your customer relationship. It can be rendered on an iPad. It can re be rendered on an iPhone, a laptop. But the cool thing is, is that with something like this, we're pulling data from systems that were written in different decades, in different languages. Right? On completely different platforms. And it's, it's like Docker is this time machine that lets us violate the space time continuum and like create this giant mashup across the decades. So, not only is like that user experience story cool, but the economic story is also really cool. So, with Docker and microservices, we're much more easily able to move our workloads to the cloud. Right? And, and deal with things like scalability issues. So for a couple of months every year, we force every single one of our customers or our group customers to come back during open benefits enrollment season. You know, this is when, uh, through your employer, you go to, to all your benefits providers and you say, yes, I want the same coverage as last year, or no, I need to increase my coverage or update my beneficiaries. This causes a 25x increase in traffic of over normal time periods in the rest of the year. It sounds like a perfect problem for the cloud, right? There's no mainframe in the cloud, but a layer of microservices that are Dockerized can easily be moved up into Azure. We're also finding out that it takes a lot less machines to run our applications. In some extreme cases, we're seeing almost 70% consolidation, right? That's buku dinero. That's a lot of money that we're saving. And finally, our operations teams are seeing massive leverage from the orchestration and automation technology that's built into Docker Data Center. Things that used to be hard, like scaling a service 
from two to 10 or 100 instances are now easy. I, I think there's probably 80% of the people in this room can write me a single command that will do this in seconds or minutes in a Docker cluster. Likewise, if you have a hardware failure or a VM crashes, those workloads are already rescheduled and running somewhere else by the time an alert pops up on that ops console. But my favorite part of this story is really the people side, right? And how we got this done. We formed this team in MetLife called the Mod Squad, right? And this was really MetLife's first foray into DevOps. And we took a bunch of developers and paired them up with architects and infrastructure engineers and operators. And we sent them to one side of the building and said, go figure it out. Go figure out how to containerize microservices. And they did it, right? They did it. And the cool thing is they did all this other stuff too. They started playing around with chat ops, right? Managing Docker infrastructure from a chat room. They started playing around with bots and doing all these system maintenance tasks without any human intervention. They ended up uh, bringing in open source technology, which is like something that MetLife has traditionally had an allergic reaction to. They really changed the culture at MetLife. And the thing is that they had a great time doing it. Um, after the first phase of the project, uh, we sent out a survey. And by and large, everyone said it was the most fulfilling and fun project they'd ever worked at in their entire career. So they got stuff done and they had fun doing it. This team uh, recently won an award from, from our CIO, and we pulled them up to New York, this big extravagant dinner and gala, and the CIO said, you guys are changing the culture of the company. You're antibodies to the status quo. It pretty much sums up what you can do with Docker and DevOps. And anyone who's worked in an enterprise knows things are hard to do, right? It's hard to move fast. It's hard to deal with this legacy, right? You've got process issues. You've got culture problems, right? And if, you, if I were to talk to someone who works in a similar size organization, and they'd say, how long did it take you to do? 12 months, 18 months, 24 months? It took us five months to go from concept to production with Docker and microservices, five months. And it ended up igniting this spark that is spreading across MetLife, right? There's not a week that goes by where someone doesn't come up and say, hey, how do I, how do I start doing this Docker thing? How do I do these microservices? I want to start my own mod squad, right? This is really potent stuff. Docker, microservices is technology. DevOps is a culture, right? It's transformative. It really is, right? You can move faster. You're more agile. You're more nimble. And that, my friends, is competitive advantage. So if you want to know more about this, right, like from a practitioner's view, come to Tim Tyler's talk later today. He's speaking at 11.15. And he's got kind of the in the trenches view or the lessons learned. It's good stuff. Thank you. Oh, that was amazing. Hey, can I get another round of, uh, of applause for Aaron? That was just an incredible, incredible talk. And actually, if you could join me in also giving a huge round of applause to Mark from Oracle and to Swami uh, uh, from Visa, it was really great to hear, hear your perspectives. And of course, all of them have <laughs> sessions where you can learn more. So just a few more things. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, what we showed during the demos today, here's a set of, uh, set of talks you can attend. Of course, there are probably more talks that you want to attend than you'll be able to fit in. Uh, everything is going to be videotaped uh, and made available online uh, in a few days. And highly encourage you to, if you're interested, to learn these things. Uh, also, very much encourage you to learn from other customers. Uh, one of the best things about this DockerCon is that there are so many wonderful customers who are sharing their stories. Uh, Visa and MetLife, but also the people that you see listed here. And it's a great range of applications, all the way from traditional applications to microservices, big data, uh, Internet of Things, and even some machine learning. So 
encourage you to go see it. And with that, thank you. Uh, enjoy day two of DockerCon.